Welcome everyone to German Tour Views. Today we're going to take a look at the Knipex Series 13 pliers used for electrical installation. These are multifunctional pliers that are targeted for electricians doing structured residential and commercial wiring. The particular model I picked up is 1382-8. Just like many of Knipex pliers, there are several variations on the base model that include different handle styles, accessories, and surface finishes. The second two digits in the model number indicate the handle and finish style, with an 81 being plastic coated handles, 82 with the two component handles, 86 with the chrome plated and insulated handles, a 91 being plastic coated handles with a spring loaded joint, 92 being the two component handles with a spring loaded joint, and 96 being the chrome plated insulated handles with a spring loaded joint. There's also one additional model ending in T that includes a tether attachment to be used for fall protection. The third portion of the part number indicates the length of the unit, and it's going to be one of two values in this series, either an 8 or a 200. When marked with 200 for 200 millimeters, this indicates the wire gauges will be marked in cross-sectional area in millimeters. When marked with an 8 for 8 inches, this indicates that the wire gauges will be marked in American wire gauge. One thing to note is that the selection is quite limited for the units offered with AWG markings, with only three versions offered, the plastic coated handles, the two component handles, and the VDE handles. If you want the spring-loaded, tethered, or chrome-plated version, you will need to get the metric-labeled ones that end in 200. One combination that appears to be exclusive to the AWG markings is the VDE handles in a non-chrome-plated version, with the second two digits being 88 for that particular model. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. First thing I did is clean off the surface a bit with some ballast to remove any anti-corrosion protection applied by the factory. Initial impressions of this unit are quite good. You can tell that there are a lot of production steps involved in creating this particular series. They open quite smooth right out of the box and don't need any type of break-in or joint adjustment to use them. Taking a closer look at the pliers, we'll run through the various features starting with the tip. The first half of the pliers contains a series of gripping surfaces used to perform a variety of tasks. The first section contains a totally flat gripping surface that is used for handling and bending soft wire into loops. The second section contains a series of small rounded teeth that are designed to handle more delicate surfaces that sharper teeth may damage. The third section contains a larger opening with sharpened coarse teeth used for gripping round fittings and fasteners. The last section in this first half there is a crimping die used for ferrules. It should also be noted that the first half of the pliers contain sharp outside edges used for deburring and widening holes. The second half of the pliers contains some wire strippers and a cable cutter. This half has a much finer surface grind than the first part which is presumably required for the cable cutter blades. There are two wire strippers labeled 14 and 12 to represent the corresponding AWG wire size. I looked at these markings under some magnification and they appear to be a deep laser etching. Following the wire strippers is a cable cutter for cutting cables up to 15 millimeter in diameter. This particular model pliers uses a bolted joint with a torque screw that can be adjusted in the future if it ever becomes loose. The unit I picked up contains the two component handles. As noted on the handles, these pliers are not intended for hard metals such as steel and really should only be used on copper and aluminum. One thing I noticed is that these seem to be a little bit short on the length. At only 200 millimeters, these are the same length as these 27 series needle nose pliers. This is probably why the handles feel a bit awkward. Probably would have benefited with a slightly longer handle. It seems like the handle length on these 09 series lines and pliers would have been more appropriate, which would give it a total length of around 240 millimeters. Not really too big of a deal, but you won't get as much leverage when cutting thicker cable and using the die crimper. It is a size versus leverage trade-off, where the designers here have gone on the size path to reduce the overall tool size. One thing to note is that this particular tool is one of the most expensive pliers that Kinipex offers. I think part of that is the extra amount of surface grinding and finishing that is required for this particular tool over any others. But if you think about all the tools that this could potentially replace, it ends up being a bargain if this tool can meet all the needs for your application. Just a few examples of the tools that the 13 series can potentially replace are wire strippers, cable cutters, ferrule crimpers, and a portion of combination pliers. It could also act as a deburring tool and replace flat nose smooth pliers. Normally I don't like to test tools in a vacuum, but since I'm not an electrician, I'll just perform a couple of the tasks that you would with these pliers as an electrician. Testing the cable cutters, I definitely went through this two conductor 12 American wire gauge non-metallic sheath cable with ease, even easier with the corresponding 14 American wire gauge cable. Comparing these to the Philo cable cutters, which I really liked, it was definitely easier with the Knipex, but I think this is mostly due to the increased leverage since it has longer handles than the Philo. Comparing the cutting power to your typical linesman pliers, and there really is no comparison, the linesman pliers would be the easiest way to cut this type of wire, but at the expense of carrying around an extra tool. You could use the cable cutters to score the outer jacket material. I'm not sure if this would be recommended though because of the curved nature of the blades 
makes it much more likely to damage the inner insulation, but you can certainly do this in a pinch. Using the cable strippers, I had no problem on the insulation of these cables. It did leave a small mark on the conductor, but I believe that is typical for this style cable stripper when using solid conductor wire. One feature I really like about these pliers is the area at the tip that you can use for bending loops in a round cable. Normally I would use rounded pliers for this task, but it seems that it worked fine using these. I tried bending the loops both from the end and from the side, and found that from the side worked more consistently, even though it took a bit more force. The softer jaws at the end also made it easy to twist the wire as needed without leaving significant scoring of the conductor. I had no problem using these pliers to remove a standard knockout from this steel handy box. The deburring features of the edges doesn't really look to be applicable to box knockouts since you would normally install a cable clamp here. I think these are more for conduit pipe. It seems like it's one of the features that, of the pliers that I would personally use the least. I also had plenty of clearance to tighten the conduit nut with these pliers using the sharp jaws. So technically all you would really need to install a mains outlet would be this tool and a screwdriver. Something that would normally take several other electrician's tools. Looking into the final feature of the pliers, and that is the end sleeve crimper used to install ferrules on stranded wire. Here I have some stranded 12 American wire gauge silver coated wire, which I will install an insulated ferrule onto. Normally I'm used to crimping these into square or hex profiles, so the crimping die here is not one that I'm familiar with for use with ferrules. I found that from the length of the pliers it was a bit difficult to get enough leverage to really feel like I got a good crimp on these. I didn't feel very confident about this particular crimp, so I used a more specific pair for this operation and it felt like it did a much better job than the universal pliers. I did try this once more with the same wire gauge that had more strands in it, and it seemed to crimp a lot better than the one with the thinner strands. Overall, I think this did a fine job doing the work of several tools. It is very specialized, so it won't be universal for all electrical installation jobs, so it really seems to be targeted towards structured building wire, and not necessarily industrial control panel installation and maintenance. So some of the electrician viewers will have to give me your opinions as well. Hopefully you enjoyed that look at the Kinipex number 13 electrical installation pliers. Check out the link in the description of the four of you. There are some affiliate links in the description if you feel the urge to pick this unit up. Have a good week and I'll catch you guys next time.